Okay, welcome back to the Spirit Led Authoring Group, and it is February 6th, 2019. Um, now Sharon submitted a question, and then uh, if y'all have questions on anything specific that I can help you with, uh, how, how would y'all like to go? Does, who wants to go first, or do you want me to answer Sharon's questions first? Or Yeah, why don't you do Sharon's? Okay. So, um, hers was, do I need an editor? How's the best way to find a publisher? And, um, she said some people have said she should self publish, but she doesn't know how to do that. And is that a good way to go? All right. So this is a, um, every, I think everybody needs an editor personally. <laughs> I think whether you hire a professional editor or you get, you know, a friend who's good at, English to help you with it or you know somebody that's good at editing um, our, my my theory is that one really good editor is worth probably 10 proofreaders <laughs> friends that you send it to if you want it to be really polished a good editor uh, I mean it could cost you six hundred dollars or more for a good editor depending on the length of the book you know but um, if it's your signature book and it's like the thing for you, it's your, um, you know, kind of your business card or your claim to fame, then it's worth the investment for an editor. Um, that's my th thoughts on that. And then I, I have some people I can recommend if you're looking for somebody like that. There are, and I talk about this in the, the course there are a few types of editors there's line editors who go through it line by line and try to you know they're looking for anything on line by line some of them will even read the book backwards just to <laughs> try to see you know um, not so much conceptually the overall picture but what's wrong within each grammar you know sentencing all that kind of stuff um, you got proofreaders that are just looking for spelling errors, obvious things that are missing. Uh, a content editor, you're going to pay the most for a content editor because they're going to look at the big picture of the book and they're going to say, okay, you really need to move this over here or this story arc doesn't work or, you know, you're needing, um, I mean, they're looking at it from a big picture standpoint and, and more about the content itself. Um, I have used, depending on the book, uh, an uncertain justice I used a content editor for, and it was well worth it because that story was so hard to, you know, get a really good story arc with it unless I had some kind of professional help on what I needed to do. And that, that editor was fantastic for that. Most of the time I might use a batch of proofreaders if I'm just, trying to get something out or um, I have paid for the like the line editors as well so it's it's you it depends on you your budget and how perfect you want it to be but you could have 10 people proofread it and they'll still miss stuff but um, like the one editor that I have that's a line editor she catches just about everything I mean there's been books that I've used her on that I'm like there's no errors that I Nobody even reported any errors in that, but you got to have the budget to do that. Okay. And then as far as publishing, self-publishing versus um, using a publishing house, if your option is a small publisher, small, small publishing company versus self-publishing, self-publish, because they're going to give you maybe 10% and you're still going to have to do all the work, you know, I mean, they'll get it into print form for you, but as far as the marketing and everything, a small to medium publishing house, they're not really going to put you on the map. It's marketing wise. And if you're going to have to do the marketing, my theory is make the profit yourself. Why should you give the profit away to a small to medium publishing house? If, uh, you know, if you get picked up by a random house or somebody big, you know, then heck, go for it. You know, they'll get you on bookshelves everywhere. But um, I wouldn't hold my book hostage waiting around for it to be sold to some big publishing house. You really have to have 
a following already. To get a big publishing house, you need a platform already built. You need a big social media following, a big mailing list, you know, big presence. And then they will look at you, which goes back to you're going to do the marketing again. <laughs> but, you know, if you've done enough marketing to have a presence, then you'll get the, you can use a literary agent to get the attention of a big publishing house. And of course that's going to probably get you a lot more sales. So that's, you just got to ask yourself, do you have the big following? Are you willing to, to do the work to get the big following? Either way, you're going to have to build a following <laughs> to sell the book. So uh, do y'all have anything you want to ask on that, those, that subject that Sharon had, you might think of something she'd want to know that, or that maybe you want to know. Well, maybe you can talk about, you know, um, what is the cost maybe for a content editor versus a line editor? Yeah, I mean, it depends on the content editor. I mean, um, you, I know like Dave does content editing and it's, I think it's around, uh, it depends on how thorough. If he does a really thorough one, it's like $80 an hour for a thorough content edit, but he's fast. Mm -hmm. um, I paid um, Meredith Diaz to do, what book was it she did? I think she did Like the World. So it's about a 150 page book mm -hmm. for 600, I think. And that was a line edit. So you can do, like with a content editor, you could say, just give me four hours of your time. You know, you could do that. At least that's the way Dave will do it. He'll be like, do you, how thorough do you want? You want me to go really mega deep? I, you know, you pay me, tell me how many hours it fits your budget and I'll do it. Mm -hmm. Don't quote me on his budget. I don't, <laughs> he might give you a better deal or not. You know, I don't know. Uh, that's just what I saw him quote on the last project. But if it was like a more of a superficial look, I think he charged more around 40 an hour. So okay. it just depends on how thorough, deep, you know, whether you're wanting massive. A con that's probably more of a content edit versus a, a regular edit, you know, like a line, line edit. Yeah. I think that was his rate, the, the contrast on that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And then anything else on that? Or maybe I'll have questions of your own. Okay, so she I think she was she was talking about is is so what are the steps that we need to think about going through to be able to do self publishing, you know, and are those that is that in the videos? A lot of it is in the training. And okay. you can come and ask me too, because mm -hmm. Um, I know the process inside and out, but it is in the, the create a wow book program. The spirit led authoring create a wow program has like a checklist of everything you're going to need to know before you go to, to print. It has, um, I, I've been updating it and making videos as I put books into print of the different aspects of it. It's not that hard. Basically what you're going to do is, if you decide to self-publish, my recommendation is just go straight to Amazon. They've got a print publishing thing right out of the KDP now. Uh, along, so that KDP is Kindle Direct Publishing. So it does both the Kindle books and the print books. And they have a, they even have a book cover creator in there. And you can make a fairly decent looking book, like my Restoring Liberty book. Uh, Y'all saw that one, I think. I did it with their Kindle print. I mean, their paperback book mm -hmm. creator. So it did the front and the back. And the way it does, whether you have them do it or you get a like a book designer, it's one big document that has the front, the spine, and the back. So generally what you do is, is you get the interior laid out first. Uh, I did this with a, I have an old version of PageMaker that I use for the interior and that's obsolete. So unless you can pick up a cheap one on eBay or something and you know how to use it. But um, uh, my daughter uses InDesign for book cover. I mean, book interiors. Well, she did 
She may have done the, yeah, I think she did the cover for um, Confidence Rising and InDesign for me. So that's an Adobe product. But anyway, what you do is you, you lay out the interior first because you need to know how many pages it's, it is because that determines the spine. And you'll notice like on this one, I don't have any words on the spine because this book is so thin. Emma's like, we can't, we can't fit any words on your spine. It's too thin, you know? So sometimes I'll go with, um, make my book dimensions smaller. If it's a shorter book, make the book dimensions smaller just so you get a thicker looking oh. book. Mm -hmm. And then you can do the spine. I didn't with this one because I had a, I had already laid it out. <laughs> <laughs> in PageMaker at the eight and a half by five and a half, but you could go down to maybe like an eight by five if it was, I mean, make more of a pocket size book. So the so first, go ahead, go ahead. For those of us not using PageMaker <laughs> right. and just using Word, is there a way that we should format that? Yes, and I despise it, and I have not been able to figure it out. <laughs> so, oh, gee, if you can't figure it out, how are the rest of us going to figure it out? <laughs> there probably is a way to do it if you just want it to. They have some templates you download, but it looks like you take and copy your stuff and paste it into the over the top of their words and things. And I was like, no, to heck with this. I am not doing this. It, I couldn't really see how when it wrapped that it would work. I don't, I don't know. There's got to be somebody that's got a video on how to do it, but their video training on that is not good. It, it doesn't make any sense in my opinion. Now I have seen where they are upgrading the Kindle create software that makes the Kindle book. Um, they recently upgraded it to it's so much easier for Kindle books. Your, your bullets will turn out right. They used to not. Um, and now they're doing another upgrade that will lay out an interior of a book. So just look for that. By the time y'all are done and ready, I bet they'll have that polished because they've got it in a beta right now, which I haven't had time to dig into. Okay. But I think I'd do that over Word. It's just, no. Um, yeah, but we have to write it in some format. Yeah, write it in Word, and then you give Word the Kindle, you go to Kindle Create and you open the Word document. And it's like with the Kindle program, it'll automatically convert it. So I'm thinking that we'll do that with the interior of a print book as well. Okay, and then at that point, do you, do you already have inserted charts, graphs, um, illustrations? Um... I'm not, I can't speak to what that Kindle Create program is going to do with it for a paperback, but for a Kindle book, all of those charts, graphs, and everything need to be saved as like a JPEG image of some kind. They, they need to be images. But they can they be saved in Word and then just copy and paste it into Kindle Create, or do we have to, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, you may end up having to use a different. Well, just blanketly across the board, things like Excel tables or Word tables will not convert to my, from Microsoft Word in. You need to save them as an image unless they have updated something in that Kindle Create program. I'll try to research it and just try taking a table into it and see what happens. But in the past, uh, like, you know how Word, they'll let you put text blocks or all of that. None of that stuff goes right. It, it doesn't go at all. So I've done things like get a screenshot of it, you know, and turn it into an image like a JPEG image and save it and then put that into the document, the Word document, and then bring it over or save it as a Kindle and it'll show up as an image in there. Okay, so you if, if it is JPEG in with the um, in with your Word document, then it will transfer over is what you're saying. Yeah, I haven't tested it for sure with the Kindle Create, but you can make it do it with the Kindle, you know, even if you have to do it with uh, something like Calibre or, you know, kind of a little bit more convoluted Kindle creation method. It can be done. 
if it's an image. And I, I'll check and see if the Kindle Create can take a table of content. Um, do you have maybe your document with you already have tables and stuff in something? Well, I'm I'm I found that I need to create tables instead of just trying to put it into Word. Um, it's not working out that way. Um, yeah, you can't just do all that tabbing and expect it to line up. No, or, no it won't line up. Like I have a, a list of of words, and I really didn't want a graph with lines. And I guess I can create a table with outlines. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's what I'm going to do. And so then I would have to take a screenshot of that, is what you're saying, and then put that into the document. Yeah, that'd be, that right? the, best. That'd be the best way to go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't know that that that's not going to be the good way to go for a uh, print document. Uh, what I would recommend is get a good designer. A good book designer to help you do that. Uh, Sherry Brady is not expensive, and for the she's up there by you, uh, Christine. Okay. So uh, it needs to be laid out because you don't want screenshots in a print book. That's just not going to be quick. No. Quality, you know. So she would help with tables or illustrations and things like that. And yeah, that. yeah. She's a graphic designer and a book designer so she can help you with that and I will test and see I'll, I'll be playing around with that Kindle upgrade and I will see first I'll just take a look and see if those tables will come in to a Kindle book anymore I, I mean now that they've upgraded that okay all right anything else no, that's the nuts and bolts that I needed, I think. Um, Naya, I think I had you on mute. I want to try to unmute you. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. You yeah. answered everything that I was questioning about self-publishing or finding a publisher because I had the same question she did. Oh, okay, good. Everybody's on the same page. Or anything about writing or need any energy work on anything? or. <laughs> Maybe check anything. I feel like I'm still, I, I'm moving along um, pretty good. I did, uh, I struggled for a while on that whole LDS tone versus general Christian. And even having friends read what I've already written so far to try and offer input of how to change the verbiage if I needed to, all of them were like, are you sure? Are you sure you should leave it the way that it is? Nobody was helpful. <laughs> so I talked to somebody else about it and she suggested write it with my stories true to my LDS faith and my beliefs and then add in a general Christian explanation for anything that needs that and I was like oh that would that makes sense that actually would really be good yeah that so that will help me move forward yeah I think at this point it's just important to get it down and get it in the most um, yes. <laughs> just the most authentic way for you to get it down and then it can be always edited and, and those explanations added later I mean it's amazing how many things that as LDS people we don't realize needs to be translated to something <laughs> that people can yeah. understand <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I was working with a lady that had only lived in Utah and from that background. And she was trying to create something for Christians across the board. And I went to one of her events and I'm like, well, this is intrinsically LDS and this and this and this. And I just made her a list and just a bunch of things. She's like, really? That? I'm like, yeah, that no, went. <laughs> That's just our stuff. That's not. You're going to have to translate that. So you need somebody to go through it and look at it. And when you're done, and I wouldn't do it now. I don't look, look at it and help you figure out, okay, how do I word that a little differently? Or Well, I was hoping by having them look over the first section that they would give me an idea for going forward. And yeah, it wasn't very helpful. <laughs> so, 
I like the best idea of just moving forward with my own uh, stories that are connected to the LDS. And then if somebody edits it or reads it, they can say, please clarify this. And then I'll be able to go back and clarify exact making things more general Christian in those areas, you know, that they point out. So, yeah. Do you have any friends that aren't LDS that could do that for you? I do have friends that are not LDS that are reading it, and all of them said, stick to your LDS stories. It carries the most power. Oh, well, good. I was like, well, that was helpful. <laughs> yeah. Well, the concepts and everything, and even a lot of the beliefs, are, they're easily just... Interchangeable. Yeah, it's a, we just have different lingo, is all it is, you know, for a lot of it. Um, especially if you're just telling this kind of a story and it's not some kind of doctrinal thing, you know. Mm -hmm. you be able to. Yeah, except that there um, recently was a book out that one of my daughters who's not active read and thought it was one of her best books. And um, it, I think it's called Educated. And it's, um, and, and, you know, I homeschooled the kids, but this is people that are fundamentalist homeschool. I mean, they were way off. And it was written in such a light that just reading through the book, I didn't read in depth the book. I just went, this goes so far the opposite direction of what, even a mainstream LDS homeschooler would be, you know, it was almost to the point of offensive to me, but this is one of a best-selling book. And so it really slants and slams the culture. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The culture of homeschooling? Of homeschooling and, and, and being LDS and that kind of thing. So I was, um, I was actually offended. Was it an LDS author? Or an she is. She, well, I don't know that she is now. But oh, oh okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And it's, it's one of the top books of last year. So is it bad-mouthing homeschooling? Is it um, no, it just leaves it in such a light that it is, um, it really is dangerous type thing. Is the person for homeschooling, or they've just made it sound... No, she's telling her story. Oh, okay. And, it's and it comes oh, off... Oh, I think I know what book you're talking about. Pardon me? I think I know what book you're talking about. It's called it, Educated. Yeah. I think I've heard about that. Yeah. And I, I, I just would be, especially if you're going to go for a Christian market, but like Marty said, get your story written down, and then have somebody, um, you know, help you. Help with the verbiage of that, yep. Yeah. I just would be careful, you know, and, and, and I am not ashamed to say that I'm, I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and my book is not even going to necessarily go for a Christian market. It's going to be mass, but I just, um, yeah. And those kinds of things happen in every culture and every kind of, um, you know, even a workplace situation, there are situations that get off mm -hmm. where people are crazy. <laughs> yeah, crazy people are, yeah, you wouldn't want to make a, a, hey, this is a crazy situation and this is the norm for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh -huh. Homeschools, is that kind of what they're doing? Homeschooling like or parenting or whatever it is or living in Timbuktu, <laughs> you know. Right, yeah. Yeah, I got you. Huh. All right. Um, any other questions on anything? I'm just going to wave a magic wand and know that this little short period of time where I'm taking care of my husband with a shoulder and have a child who's going bonkers, it's only going to, it's going to pass really fast. <laughs> and I'll be able to get balance back in my life of back to writing. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Well, y'all are doing great though. I mean, you've been writing and you're doing well and, uh, 
you know, life happens, Christine. So you catch yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. One of the things that I have learned, though, and have gotten some um, insights into is not to um, do a brain dump. Not to do a brain dump. Yeah. Not to do a brain dump into, into the book I'm working on. To um, keep it simple because it will be overwhelming for people. Uh, you probably got about 10 books. <laughs> I know I have at least six. Yeah. So I can't put them all into one book and that's okay. Yeah. Um, and, and so I had to really pull back and say, you know, and then I'm thinking, oh, well, it won't be long enough. And I'm thinking, no, it will be. <laughs> because by the time you, you know, when you're talking about spacing and all those kinds of things, I'm going, oh, it really will be long enough. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, good. Not, that's not a problem there. Okay. All right. Well, you might be able to make your other call, Christine. How the, 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 I think I'm going to hop on that. If I can find the link for it. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for showing up, ladies. Thanks for your questions. Good stuff. Uh, All right. Thanks, Marnie. All right. Take care.